Hello everyone, this is Mutant and Nuts and today we'll be continuing our beginner friendly road to SCP video series. Today we'll be looking at another hack the box machine that is bashed. It is based on Windows and the difficulty is medium. So let's just get started. Another thing about the box, obviously the host name itself is a slang. So this is what it is and let's just go forward and check out the box. So we have the auto recon uh, py file over here which I'll be executing. So that means I'm going to run an auto recon file, or, sorry auto recon scan on the target machine which is going to do few nmap scans at first and it's going to based on the result it's going to do additional scans on the open ports and services. So I always use this and 95% of the time it works really great sometimes you have to manually enumerate things further. So it's like you know always don't rely on an automated scanner. Try to know things uh, you know try to do things manually and know it to actually manually enumerate everything. So what we'll try to do is we'll run this file as root. So I'll be giving sudo over here and I'll be giving sudo because I'm running the box as Kali. I'll be giving Python 3 in order to run this autorecon.py file. I'll be giving the target IP address that is 10.10.10.9 in the case of this target machine and we'll be giving the O switch for output directory wherever we want to save the scan result as. So I did already execute the scan so because it takes quite some time and obviously the scan would give you like the, these four directories over here. So exploit, loot, report, scan. So this is like fully prepared for OSCP. It's like you have this local txt nodes proof. You can mention it over here. Screenshots, directory, loot is if you find anything interesting from the target machine. So let's just look at the scan as well. We'll look at the full TCP and map scan at first. We have like three ports open, okay. Port 80 running HTTP, and this is the web server IIS HTTP 7.5 Microsoft One, and we have 135.49.154 running MSRPC. I don't think we'll find anything in MSRPC, but uh, so let's just look into the 80 port. Sorry, I don't think we have a host name over here anywhere, okay. So we look into port 80, we see that there is something called as Drupal 7. We don't know what that is, let's just look into it later and over here we get HTTP method, it says some risky method trace but I don't think I could find anything in particular to probably get some RC or something. But yeah, so we have this uh, HTTP robots.txt file and it has multiple files over here. So let's just look into this in a bit. So what we'll try to do is we'll uh, you know try to load up this uh, HTTP server or the application which is present and see if we get something over there. So till it loads, okay, it immediately did load and it says welcome to this particular thing and it's powered by Drupal. So one important thing about, you know, web applications, you have probably it will be like, you know, two types of web application. One is like vendor or like open source web application, which is like probably this Drupal, which is maintained by a vendor, which is uh, maintained by some open source uh, person or something. So in short, it's going to have like versions present over there. It's going to, you know, find out vulnerabilities and they're going to patch it, something like that. So that means it will be having default credentials. It will be having vulnerabilities or POCs which are present. Other thing is it can have a custom web application. In OSCP, obviously the prior boxes, we saw that multiple custom applications were present, right? So we had to manually enumerate things further and check out and find that exploit path. So we have this Drupal web application over here and uh, it looks like a vendor specific web application we have username password i tried entering the default credentials and admin admin all these passwords but i could not enter into the box and also create new account but that is uh, we cannot do that it says for some admin access is required or approval is required something so in short we do not get anywhere over here so what we'll try to do is two things we can obviously check view page source to see and if anything interesting is present over here Another thing is run search exploit and also you can do a group scan. So for this Drupal application, there's a scanner called group scan. So I think I've already installed it in my Kali machine. I don't think it comes pre-installed. You can you get it from GitHub. So if you do group scan and you have to give the scan mode over here. So this is how would, you would run it as scan and Drupal and you and the URL that is 10.10.10.9. .10 so this is how you run the scan. It takes quite some time to run. I did already run and execute the scan. So let's just look into it. It was not done by auto recon. This is the scan which I did run. And we get something like, you know, C tools, library, services, PHP over here, modules, PHP. We have few themes. It says possible version. And that's it. Nothing else. So let's just leave this aside for now. What we'll try to do is we'll look at that robots.txt file which we saw earlier, right? We saw it on our nmap scan over here a few robot.txt. So let's just look into it. 
So this is the robot.txt file which we, the, you know, the autorecon scan tried to get it. And if we see, we'll try to just load this particular autorecon page, okay. Not autorecon, my bad. We'll just try to uh, check out our robots.txt file over here. So we have this robots.txt file and it says like allow, disallow and multiple entries, right? So this is obviously like some, not some rule setting. This is for like some actual uh, Google search engine or Yahoo search engines. So where they are, you know, gonna try to get some files. Suppose if there is some, you are, you know, there is a post or something, okay. Which probably just consider this comment section. There's a post present, which is present in this comment section, okay. So in the post it mentioned like how do you, uh, you know, try to uh, access Drupal application. So it is present in this particular page. But if in Google, if you type that, it's going to read this robots.txt, it's going to be like disallow, you cannot read this. So Google will obey that, it will be like, hey, you know what, I cannot go further, so I'll just not go into this directory or the files present. So this is what Google or any search engines would do, but for, you know, trying to pen test something, so we'll probably these things are like the most interesting things probably for, you know, disallowed ones. So that means that you don't have authority to go over there, uh, but then obviously you can access it, it says you you know, do not go over there, it says does allow, but if you go change log txt and try it over here, it did let us get the change log file. Why change log is present? Because we'll get the version number away and we do get 7.54. Sometimes, you know, it's tricky. The change log txt is like some old, older version or something just to throw you in the rabbit hole. So that's what it is, but let's just look into it. Copy this for now. Drupal version. We get 7.54 and also in our scan over here we get 7.54, right? Also this uh, Drupal is running like PHP over here, so probably this PHP module present over here. So that's what we found and what we'll try to do now is use search exploit and see if we get some exploit for 7.54. So we'll do, if you guys don't know what search exploit is, search exploit is like an offline data exploit database present in your Kali machine. So it's going to check for a Drupal exploit in your Kali machine itself. So if you see, we get multiple exploit, but we are searching for 7.54, all these things don't seem to be interesting, older versions. So we have one over here, okay, so this is what we are going to look at, and also this one particular thing looks interesting, okay. So we'll just look into it first, obviously there's this as well, but I don't think this is the way, but yeah, let's just look into this particular exploit later, this is like the most simplest version. And we have the 7.x, that means probably you can enter 5.4 over here, so we can have this RC done. So let's just check that. It's a PHP exploit, by the way. So obviously there are other versions over here which says like below 8. So in the, in the case, like if 7x does not work, obviously that does not mean I'm not going to try others, right? I'm going to try this as well. I'm going to, obviously not this because this is Metasploit. I'm going to try this over here, then I'm going to try this, 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 so on, and so on. Like one on one, I'm going to try, okay? So we go to CD exploit, we go to exploit directory, we'll try to use source exploit and mirror the file using the M switch into our current working directory. So we have the file over there and let's just look into it. So this is the file and this is probably like an SQL injection. It's going to do an SQL injection to get some sorry current endpoint with admin credentials and hash and alter it and for some reason we are going to get a, a file uploaded over there okay so obviously this particular expert you can go and check it out more over here i guess so it says over here that it's gonna you know you can upload a file probably and we can probably enter some remote you know some php uh, code over here and we can get a execution orce done so if we look over here, it says URL, endpoint path, endpoint, probably you have to change the URL over here because this is not what our target machine is and probably we'll change the file name. So we'll modify this exploit a little. So what we'll try to do is we'll just try to, this is what I always do, I leave the original one and I try to rename this, mention probably exploit one PHP. Okay. Now what we'll try to do is remove this entire thing. Notice how the forward slash is not present after this. So we'll remove this. 10.10.10.9. I'll add that. I'll not add the forward slash. Otherwise it will error out. And also if you see, it's going to merge this URL, which is going to come over here. And also the endpoint path. That is this thing, which is going to come over here. So this thing already has a forward slash. So don't enter it over here. Leave it as it is. 
and it says it's going to create a file okay it's going to allow to write a file if you see over here write a file okay so write the file it says post browser and this is the file which is coming over here so the file which is going to come is this particular file so obviously name is uh, you can leave it as it is if required but let's just change that to test one php because it's the first test so let's just do that and we have the data of this particular test one php file what we can do is we'll remove this eval thing okay i don't want to do this so what i'll do is i'll just erase this i'll add a normal uh, you know php echo system command which i use it multiple times Obviously, you can add that reverse shell as well from Pentest Monkey PHP reverse shell, but that will be a huge list, right? So it's better try to add this one line, you know, because it, if it errors out the exploit or something, you would not know what went wrong. So let's just try to keep it simple. Remove this thing over here. Mention echo. Mention system. Then the bracket. Okay. Request. Okay. So now what it is, we have to give this uh, yeah, square brackets over here and also we'll remove that other bracket. Just make sure you are, you know, doing it properly with the brackets over here. So it's a bit tricky and over here, instead of this PHP input, we, we will probably enter something like mutated nuts. So you can enter something like commands, you can enter anything over here. So this is the parameter name which we are going to give. So why are these two things present? These things are new over here because if I remove them, it's going to be like this particular thing is data and then this particular thing is a data and this muted and nuts is just going to get ignored. So because since we are giving single quotes, right? So probably you can give this as well, I guess. Yeah, so I think we can give this too, but uh, if you want, I think we can uh, leave it that way itself. Just want to show you all that it works this way as well in PHP because this, this is a line, I guess. So it's going to break. So this is the same thing which was present over here. So that's why I left it as it is. And what we'll try to do is we'll try to run this exploit now. So if it is successful, it's going to create a test.ph1, test1.php file and the data would be this. So probably we can achieve remote command execution using the question mark, muted and nuts and is equal to who am I or something like that. So let's just try to run it first, exploit one PHP. Just clear this. Exploit one PHP. Gives up in PHP. And it says fail to log in with fake password. For some reason, obviously you all may think that, hey, you know what? I don't think it works anymore. So probably just move on to another exploit. So if this is the case, like probably you are having a version number over here as well, right? So let's just try to, you know, play around with it more and see if it is successful. What we'll try to do is we'll try to loop this, you know, or route this to burp suit so that we can check out if there are any errors or where's the error coming. So let's just go to burp suit. So I'll just turn up of the interceptor and what we'll try to do is in burp suit since now the request if we use that exploit one php file right exploit one dot php so now this exploit one in the kali machine php file it's going to go straight to the target machine the response is going to come straight back okay now using burp suit what we'll do is burp suit obviously would be in the target machine sorry uh, Kali machine itself that is the attack machine so exploit one PHP would go to burp suit first and we can probably analyze and see what that uh, you know exploit one PHP is sending and this is very useful I guess and you know multiple times is going to help you route the traffic to burp suit or some proxy tool so that you know what that exploit is actually doing okay so because if you get stuck for some parameter or something you can actually check it out on burp suit so we'll look into that now and if we run this obviously we have it says something like fail uh, log fail to log in with fake password that's it this is the only information we have but if we do that using burp suit we'll probably try to see if there's something present so uh, exploit php will send this to burp burp will send it to this target machine it will come back to burp and again it will come from burp to exploit php this is how it's going to work so before that what we'll try to do is we'll just try to set up 
our machine's IP address, that is the local machine's IP address, that is your target, sorry, attack machine, that is your Kali machine, 227.0.1, sorry, .0.0.1, and we'll be giving the port, you can give any port, I guess. So we'll just give port 8000 and obviously we'll remove the forward slash. So this thing is set for our, uh, you know, local host IP address and port. We'll try to set that up in burp suit. So we'll go to proxy, we'll go to options, we'll go over here and do edit, oh sorry, add. And we'll do bind to port. So this is the local host IP address first, okay. We are getting some uh, requests from 127, right? That is a loopback only address. So that is a local host IP address. That is this first part is done. Second part is the port number over here. So this port number should be mentioned and present over here, in port 8000. Okay. Now it says request handling. So it says redirect to host. So we need to redirect to host 10, 10, 10, 9. The target machine's IP address and the port that is 80. Don't use this, force use TL, that's SSL, because SSL, I think HTTPS is not present as well. And, okay. So, what we'll try to do is, we'll just do OK, and it says it's running over here. So, let's just see, for now, I think there is no traffic over here, right? Let's just try to run this particular exploit again. I think I have saved, okay. So, I've saved this file, and let's just try to run it again. Obviously, if we run it again, it's not any magic or something, right? If you use burp suit, that expert is going to work magically. So, it's just going to root traffic and we'll try to see where that problem is present, right? So, this is the request which says post rest endpoint user login. So, let's just look at the, at the response and it says not found. So, that means that page itself, this page, what it's trying to do, it, it did not find it. It's not like something like invalid data sent or something like that. It says not found. This page is not present. So, what we'll try to do is, let's just copy this and check this page if it is present in our Drupal application. That's 10 point. It says requested page could not be found. So that means, obviously, it did not find that page. So that's why probably this exploit is not working. So obviously, another thing would be like, hey, you know what? This is a rabbit hole. And probably this part was not the intended part. And there was no such directory or file. But whenever you do a web application, make sure minimum you do a small TXT scan on like using GoBuster. Obviously, do the medium scan as well. But do the small TXT always. Don't rely on the common... Sorry, don't rely on the common TXT that is around 4,000 words. There's a small TXT which is like around 80,000 words. So we'll just look into that. What we'll do is we'll just locate the small TXT first. We add this file. Do not select this one. I think this is a smaller version. You select this one. Directory list 2, 3, small TXT. This is already present in Kali machine. Copy it. And we'll be using GoBuster now. GoBuster, I think you have to download it. I don't think by default it's present in Kali. So we'll be using GoBuster. If you guys don't know what GoBuster is, in short, if I do cat to the small txt, it's going to be a huge list, right, of directories. So just consider this make home page. So in short, it's going to check over here for make home page and so on. And all the 80 directories, sorry, 80,000 directories. So it's going to get the response and it's going to see if this directory exists or it does not exist based on the server's response. Okay. So we'll be using GoBuster. We'll be giving the directory mode to scan directories. We'll be giving you switch for URL, HTTP, the URL path, that is 9. Here we can give the forward slash. I don't think, if we do not give as well, it works, but let's just give it. We'll give W, that's the word list. And this is the word list. We can give extensions since, uh, so we'll give extension probably like, uh, since it's a Windows box, right? We can give ASPX, ASP. No, PHP, PY, PL, we can give BAT, we can give HTML, we can give TXT. So we can give these extensions and also we'll be giving the O switch for output. We'll be giving GoBuster, AT, small, something like that, TXT. And also we can give the threads, that is T. You can enter 40 over here, you can enter 100 as well, so it's like faster. By default, it's 10, so you can give 40 to play it safe and you can run the scan. 
So I did already execute the scan and it takes quite some time. So I'm not going to run the scan again. So let's just look at the scan result. Let's just read this. That's a go versus scan file which it created over here. Okay, so let's just look into the small txt and we see we get multiple directories over here. Now first time whenever I do the box, obviously in the previous go buster scanners where we saw like few other 200 directories, I'm going to check through all of these, right? First time when I do the box, obviously when I do the box, it takes quite some time and it takes few hours, couple of hours or more than that to do the box for the first time because manually I'm trying to check each and everything. This does not mean like I have like a tunnel vision or some like, I'm like, hey, you know what? I saw the search directory and the exploit is present over there. Obviously no one's going to do that. Even I guess top pen testers, obviously they'll find something interesting maybe. Like, hey, this root directory looks interesting. Let's just look into that. You know, that's probably from the experience. But obviously, it's not going to be like, hey, this is the directory I found and, you know, I'm going to exploit it. So obviously, I look into each and every directory. So probably look into all and see if you get something. So we have this rest directory over here, which looks interesting. So let's just copy that and paste it over here. So once we paste it, it says services endpoint rest endpoint has been set up successfully. So that means this rest endpoint which we were searching for earlier, it is present. But probably it's present in under rest, I guess. So what we'll try to do is, since rest endpoint is not present, we'll just try to use rest over here and the user and login. So let's just try to use that, sorry, and see if this works. And we did get our file over here. So that means this request was like 200 requests, right? That means this particular file is present. And I think the modification over here is that REST endpoint was modified to this REST directory. Okay, so obviously good practice always, even if you did not know that, you know, REST endpoint was REST, run a small txt scan, highly recommend it. And after that, run a medium txt as well. Or you can run medium altogether, but it's like around 2 lakhs uh, plus something. It takes quite some time to run. So run that and you know, if even if you manually browse through all these directories, you'll probably find this hint over here that, hey, this rest file says that rest endpoint is present. So that means this uh, exploit would actually work, the one which we saw earlier, right? So what we'll try to do is we can remove this for now, probably, or we can just leave it as it is and remove this rest endpoint path and remove, sorry, add this rest itself. And endpoint over here, it says, obviously, it will be like, hey, you know what, remove this as well. But over here, it mentions, right, services endpoint, rest endpoint has been set up successfully. So that means that's some path of that endpoint or something. So let's just leave it as it is, do not change anything. We have everything set up and let's just try to run the exploit again. Okay, let's just run it. And it says something different now. Stored session information, session JSON, and cache contains seven entries. That means probably the exploit worked. And yes, it did work because it says file written. That means the target machine over here and the test on PHP. Obviously, we can enter this because Burp is, you know, port forwarding it to this particular IP address. So in short, it is written to target machine port 80 test 1 PHP. Okay, so this is what it is. If it looks confusing, you can just remove this, add that target machine again. But this is like basics. You should be knowing all these things and these things like, you know, should be like common sense to you. It's okay if it is, uh, you know, a bit difficult or tricky to understand. It may take some time, but eventually you will get there. I'm just saying in order to, you know, be comfortable, you need to know all these things like, hey, you know what? This is how you root it. This is how you port forward it. Obviously, I did not learn this, uh, you know, since birth. I did not. I also had to manually check things and then learn. So don't feel bad that, you know, you probably don't know this, but it's good to have. So you should always be knowing all these things like, you know, it's uh, like a muscle memory kind of thing. Okay, so we have rest over here and we can just probably check out that test one PHP file. And it says blank, obviously blank, why? Because it executed as PHP as well. And we entered the command as muted and nuts, so we can enter muted and nuts. Who am I? Because this is the parameter which we entered, right? I hope you guys know about that PHP line, which I execute always. So the request, this is the parameter which we are gonna send. So this is the parameter which we added is equal to, and who am I? So in short, who am I will come over here. And it will be like, I'm just showing you all. It will be like, once it does a request, the command will come over here and it will system execute who am I. This is what's going to happen when I enter who am I. Obviously, this is the actual command. So 
Did who am I? We got a successful remote command execution. It says I user. We can do system info. Obviously, it looks a bit, uh, you know, it's not properly formatted. We can do view page source and we get this particular information over here. We have an x64 system, that means 64 bit, and the OS is very old, so very prone to kernel exploits, probably. And that's it, we do not have any hotfixes as well. We have the domain HTTP over here. Okay, so this is what it is. We probably get a successful remote command execution. What I'll try to do is now, I'll try to upgrade this into a proper shell. So let's just close these files for now. So, yeah, so these were the things, session files I think it created. So probably you can open this. It has some token and everything. We can probably check user JSON. We have some password, or we have some hash. We can try to crack it using John. But I think we got remote command execution, so we do not require it. But sometimes this hash can be useful. Probably, you know, it may, may be some admin's password or some other user's password or something like that. Or some file which is present over there which requires a password to be cracked or something. So this is what it would be useful. So don't always ignore all these kind of things. It may be useful. Okay, so I get the reverse uh, PowerShell. And I think you can get it from Nishang PowerShell. So this is one which I use very frequently for almost all the Windows boxes. It's going to give you a reverse shell. Uh, that is a reverse PowerShell. You can go to shells. PowerShell TCP, this is the one which I use and this is the one present over here. So this is what the this is what the file is and the function is written over here. It says invoke PowerShell TCP. So now what this is a genuine scenario, like if I'm in a target machine, I'm in the Windows machine, right? If I run this file, it's gonna run and then I have to manually use this invoke PowerShell TCP command. So instead of that, what I'll do is I'll take this you know, try to invoke it because it mentions a way example. In order to run and execute this, you have to enter this particular command. So what I'll try to do is, I'll try to enter this command in the end itself. So when this target machine, the Windows machine, the target machine over here, will try to call this particular file that is invoke PowerShell TCP PS1, it's going to read this particular thing, function, and it's going to save it in the memory, and in the end it's going to be like, hey, this particular file is even saying execute this particular function that means execute this function so this function entire function will load up so in short we do not have to give two commands we can do it in the one one file itself so let's just modify this enter the attack machines ip address that is 10.10.14.28 that is my kali machines ip address leave the port as it is two things now we need to have uh, the nc listener first you can start this port 4444 and if you don't know what netcat is it's like a connection you can receive connection since we are um, you know uploading this, this file to the target machine okay so we'll be using that using this uh, rc over here remote command execution so it's going to connect back to our system so we are listening over here so n is for numeric ip address only v is for more verbose so you got more details probably at the start and uh, l is for listening port that, sorry, listening mode, because we are listening over here, we are waiting for the, sorry, target machine, Windows machine to come and, you know, send that connection, and P is for port number, so 4444. So, we'll set up a HTTP server as well, so we'll be using Python 3 um, HTTP server, if you just set that, it's going to create on port 8000, but I think port 8000 is already in use, so this is, that's what I was saying, why it's in use, because sorry a burp suit over here so let's just remove this you can probably delete it as well yes we do not require that anymore we have already exploited uh, you know send the file to the target machine so do not require that so another thing http server if you just enter http server without any port it's by default 8000 is going to come so that's another thing like small trick maybe okay so we have nc and vlp set we have the python set over here and obviously if we before setting up the list sorry python http server we can check for the file that is ls uh, la and check for this sorry invoke powershell tcp file so let's just copy this for now okay set up the python tree http server and what we'll try to do is we'll try to route this particular traffic 
using Bob suit because we require this request. So easiest way to do go preferences, go to network settings, manual proxy configuration, use the same localhost IP address and the port, leave it as it is 8080 and use this for all protocols because over here itself it's running 8080, right? So what we'll try to do is we have this page set, let's just refresh it once and this request will come over here, the get request. Let's just send it to repeater because we'll be changing things over here. Obviously, we can enter who am I and something is going to send few things. This command, what we are entering now is in CMD, okay, most likely CMD. So, what we'll try to do is we can try to enter PowerShell command. So, we'll be using PowerShell, we'll be using the C switch. This is not the command which I have created. It's a PowerShell command to get a script that is a PS1 file and load it in the memory from a remote uh, party so that's why remote server or something so we'll be at adding new object and net web client client then we'll be doing download strings and we'll be giving the HTTP page because obviously it should reach our attack machines IP, right? Or oh, attack machines HTTP page. That is 10, 10, 14, 28, port 8000. Don't forget the port. And enter the file name that is invoke PowerShell TCP PS1, which we copied earlier. And we close the brackets. Don't send the request this way because it's not going to work. It's going to error out because you have to do a URL encoding. Be careful of doing URL encoding. Sometimes you may select this and you may bang your head that why it's not happening. Because obviously this HTTP would be included in this path as well. There's a space over here because say HTTP 1.1. So leave that as it is. And I think it looks good. Let's just send the request. And if you see the URL encoded, right? And if you don't want to URL decode it, you can do that by Control Shift U. You can do it again by Control U. Encode it. If you want to see the actual, yeah. So this is what it looks like. If you want to see the content. So this is what it looks like. It give you, gives you a glimpse. You can press F2 for focus. So it gets stuck away. So you can actually see, you know, instead of URL decoding again, because it's very useful sometimes like you're doing SQL injection or something, you try to, you know, change one, one value. So this is useful that time instead of, you know, URL decoding and encoding again. So it looks good over here. So just small uh, tip, I guess. Yeah. So we have this listener on 444. We have the HTTP server over here. Let's just send this request. It says waiting. HTTP server, we do not get anything as of now. I hope we enter the right command. 10, 10, 14, 20, 8,000. Nothing over here. PowerShell, C, invoke PowerShell, TCP, download strings. Still nothing. Not sure. Control Shift U. New object, net web client, download strings. So I think this is fine. I'm not sure. Let's just start this again. It says waiting for some reason. Let's just cancel it. PowerShell, PS1, Control U. Send it again. I hope this thing works. We load this file. Yeah, this thing actually works. I'm not sure why it's not working in PowerShell. PowerShell C. Let's just remove the C and check. Okay, for some reason, I don't know why it's not working, but uh, PowerShell seems to be not working over here. Netweb client, new object, netweb client, download strings, HTTP, 
8000 PS1. I'm really not sure. PowerShell. So what we'll try to do is we'll just try to create a MSF Venom payload for now. Okay. So since obviously this this is another thing. Obviously it did not work for some reason. I'm not sure why. Obviously PowerShell is present. I have used it before over here in the same box itself, and it did work. But I'm not sure why it's not working now. We give the right IP port as well. But let's just try it once. Let's just leave it. Use the plus. See. Send it. Okay, let's just uh, leave that aside. And what we'll try to do is we can set up a reverse shell. Okay, and the reverse shell probably we can add the MSF Venom payload that is P and Windows X64 because we saw X64 in the system info, right? So we have X64 over here, and uh, let's just use that payload. We'll be using shell reverse TCP, we'll be giving the L host that is. 10.10.14.28 uh, that is the attack machines IP address will be giving L port over here that is um, 4444 will be giving the file type that is exe and also will be giving the output as O switch and will be giving the output probably as reverse exe and uh, let's just load that I don't think it worked away I'm not sure why but uh, for some reason it says like I don't want to work over here. PowerShell C. Hmm, interesting. Command is right. If we do where I as well, I don't think that's gonna work. For some reason, leave that aside. So we have the payload executed over here. What we can do is just another thing. Uh, since the older boxes over here, Windows boxes are like this is like 2008, right? I don't think there's AV enabled over here. Okay, where AV is even present. And I don't know, I'm not sure in OSCP if a is, AV is present or no, AV is antivirus. But if it is present, it's a good thing that you can probably use the SMB server to execute files on the target machine. Okay, sorry. So let's try to do that and we'll try to create an SMB server over here. SMB, let's just keep it neat. Put the reverse file over here. And reverse file we added 44444, I guess, right? Do not get anything over here. Let's just close this, I guess. Bob's request also got done. Not sure. Unlucky. Okay. So, the the thing is, I've tried this earlier in the same part, it's not, and it's not working. I, I think I have entered the right command. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I've entered the right commands. For some reason, sometimes box boxes have to act strange, and then be like, oh, you know what. But, obviously, there should be an alternative way to do things, right? So, that's what we are going to do now. We have the SMB file over here. We'll try to create an SMB. Uh, can create an SMB server using impacket. So we'll be using sudo because it has to be executed as root. It's, it has to be running as root. So we, since we are as Kali, so we'll be giving impacket SMB server, and we'll be giving the shared drive name. You can give shared or you can give anything. So I'll probably just give muted and nuts, and I'll be giving the working directory sorry not the working directory the smb directory which we have over here because we need this file to be executed on the in the system so let's just paste that and start as impacted smb server so the server has started and the file is present over here what we'll try to do is we'll take this particular request system info okay we already added over here but send to repeat so we'll try to send this request now, system info, and we see if we get the response, right? So what we'll try to do is, we have the impacted SMB servers, you know, set up over here, hosting the reverse exe file. And also we have the NC NVLP 444 listening, okay? So we'll try to execute this particular reverse file from our SMB server. In order to access files from the SMB server, obviously we, we can, you know, probably we can just do CMD, and we can do the C command and also we'll be giving the file path that is backward slashes network drive since we are using the network drive right SMB drive so we'll be using that 28 we'll be giving the shared drive name that is mutated nuts which was used over here 
okay so we had used mutated nuts over here so we'll be using that and also we'll be giving the file name that is reverse.exe okay so and we'll close the codes over here we'll take this entire command and obviously you are encoded and let's just try to send it and see if we get a reverse shell over here on port 4444 just send it it says waiting over here but uh, it says authenticated that means it got the file and we have a shell over here okay inetpub drupal if you do who am i it says our user so we have a proper shell over here reverse shell this way one way we can you know evade the antivirus itself so you do not have to transfer the file into the attack machine because newer boxes like windows 10 boxes and 2016 i guess servers they may have antiviruses present like av present over there so it's gonna cause an issue so this is one good way cool you know neat trick to do the box you know take it i don't i'm not sure why that powershell did not work but uh, when i did the box earlier it did work okay and obviously in my write-up as well i have you know saved the screenshots and i had used powershell itself for some reason it did not work i'm not sure why what we'll try to do is we'll go back we'll just check out the directories we can go to users and uh, we go to cd dimitris to dir because there's like one unique user right we can probably check for this as well administrator i don't think we have the rights so let's just look into that if we are part of that administrator group i don't think we are let's just go to desktop dir we have the user txt file over here we can obviously very well read it so another thing is that uh, you know probably we can we can do who am i and we can do all and we get the user information okay so which group we belong to we belong to this users group service we obviously are not part of administrator so and we have few privileges set over here it says like sc impersonate privilege present so if we do system info over here we saw earlier as well that it's like 2008 server right so obviously we can do multiple kernel x i think the ms150051 we can use that i've used it in previous boxes as well so we can use that exploit another thing is we have sc impersonate privilege present over here right so what we'll try to do is we'll try to you know exploit that particular sc impersonate privilege kind of thing okay so before that we in order to you know exploit that if you guys don't know about sc impersonate c impersonate privilege exploit k So this is the article over here you can probably read it you know it does a token stealing kind of thing it will you know provoke the i think i have explained this uh, in the grandpa box i guess somewhat so yeah you can check out that video and it, it, it basically it will you know try to get uh, some administrator token system token it's going to use that token and it's going to act like some other user like that you know that's why this impersonate thing is present so it's going to act like an admin user it's going to use that token and create a process which will give probably a reverse shell or something so we can get a reverse shell you can check this out more over here and so that's how we can get our shell so what we'll try to do is uh, we look at juicy potato because that's the expert which we are going to use so juicy potato exe so we have this uh, juicy potato page over here and we get the exe file present that is this exe file over here you can get it or you can just use go to this github page over here because obviously we have the usage and everything present over here so what we'll try to do is we'll just try to run this and if you want to get the exe file you can go to this latest release fresh potatoes and you can get it from your juicy potato i already have it present in my attack machine over here juicy potato i've already downloaded so i'll just paste it in that smb folder because we'll do that itself we'll just run the file using the smb folder itself because it's safe right other than transferring it over here because we'll evade av as well i don't think av is present and when i do the box first time obviously i have like a checklist okay and i think there's fuzzy security so they'll be checking multiple things so the, those checks i do and see if there is anything present then i manually enumerate directories but obviously we have this se in person i think there was uh, the privilege escalation for this was the exploit itself kernel exploit well we'll just try to use this se in person it so what we'll try to do is now we'll uh, we'll try to run this uh, juicy potato exploit so if you look at the usage over here it says run the juicy potato file exe file 
and give the else switch that is for some listening port com server listen port so we'll just give 1337 for that and we'll give the path that is the file you want to execute so probably some reverse shell so we'll create another reverse shell over here and we'll probably name it change the port over here that is we'll enter the port as 5555 and also we'll enter reverse 2 So we did that and we got another file that is reverse 2 because we changed the port because obviously we are running on this port right as 4444 so that's why I just changed the port. Okay so now what we have we have the reverse 2 file over here we have juicy potato let's just start writing the payload okay so we have this picture over here let's just take this over here and take this particular file over here start writing the payload. So I think I'll just leave it as it is because I don't want to mess that up. So what we'll try to do is we'll use juicy potato exe file. Okay, which we are going to, sorry, execute. So that's the path we are going to give. So I think I'll just give cmd c. I'll start the codes over here. I'll be giving the network drive that is this SMB drive because I'll be calling this juicy potato file from this SMB drive. I'll be running it through there. So I'll be using that. 10, 14, 28 and mutated nuts. This was the shared drive name I had given over here and we'll be given the juicy potato file. So that's the file which we are going to run first. Then we have to give the L switch that is L and L and 1337. Okay, that's done. And we have to give the P switch over here for, I think, P switch is for the program to launch. So that is a reverse uh, file, right? So what I'll try to do is, since we are running that, again, using the network drive, I'll just copy this instead of typing it again. And I'll give the file name that is reverse2.exe, okay? And over here, it says T switch, create process call, and it says give either T, T or U. So, and it says asterisk for try both, but it's mentioned over here asterisk. So, I'll just try to go as it is as the usage is mentioned. So, I'll just give T switch asterisk, and also it says over here, my bad, I'm okay. This is much better. I click the image. So, we give the C switch, okay, and it says you have to enter the CL ID. So, at times, as in some boxes, the default there's a default uh, CL ID, okay, CLS ID. So this is like the class ID, okay, which is like allocated to each and every application, unique ID, which is allocated to any application in Windows. So this is what the CL uh, SID is about. And if we see over here, this is an optional argument, the C1. By default, this is this argument which is present. So let's just try to run it in default setting and see if it works, right? Check juicy potato and reverse file is present over here. Yes, it is present. Let's just try to run it. Before that, before running this, let's just start our uh, NC NVLP 555 netcat server, sorry, listener on port 555, and let's just try to run it. We did get this uh, authentication over, so that means it got that juicy potato file probably and got this reverse file as well. So let's just wait and see if we get something over here. It says testing and it says receive failed with error so and so. Obviously, that does not mean it's not working because this probably says this default ID was present for some newer boxes. Since we have, uh, if you do system info over here, we knew it was 2008, right? Windows Server 2008 R2 Data Center. So what we try to do is, it says over here that for the target CL SID, you can pick any, you can check here for a list. So you can go there. And also we'll be going over here, Windows Server 20, sorry, 2008, R2 Enterprise. It says Enterprise Data Center, but I think it's going to work fine. And we have this uh, CL ID over here, and here's the app ID. We obviously have to use this CL ID over here. And it says VA user, VA this. I think we can use any of the, these, but let's just try using this Win Management. And over here it says the user is anti-authority system. So let's just try to do that and see if it works. 
so let's just copy this okay and okay before that let's just copy this command which i had executed earlier let's just copy it in cherry tree okay i think okay i we did not get the new line so let's just uh, modify the command over here we'll give the c switch for that uh, cl class id and uh, let's just copy this and paste it over here that's it okay let's just take this entire command paste it over here and we have this port 555 open let's just run it and see if it works says testing dot 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 okay we got some result we got some file added i guess and it says okay create process with token okay and we have a shell over here reverse shell but first thing obviously let's see who are we as if you do who am i we are over here as system so obviously if we go back cd users and obviously let's just try this over here as well just to see that obviously we were not as admin we did not have access to administrator directory it says denied right so obviously here we'll go to administrator we do dir we are over here as administrator we have access and if you do dir we get the root txt txt file over here so this was the box and if we do who am i priv obviously oh sorry this these are the privileges my bad if you do who am i all let's just do all so we belong to all these groups over here multiple groups i guess so obviously we there will be some administrator group as well so administrators over here it's a bit messy because obviously the terminal is small over here but yeah in short we are as a system administrator sorry we are as system over here so that means we have you know administrator root access we can get the root uh, flag obviously administrator system is different but uh, yeah we do have a system access over here windows management schedule remote access okay okay so in short this was the box this was how we got the privilege escalation done obviously we can just use ms051 uh, exploit and you know get the kernel exploit done but this is juicy potato i think is a handy tool and recently i came across one box because i had to use this itself because the older uh, exploits like ms15 not ms15 sorry some other exploits earlier exploit did not work so i had to use this juicy potato and uh, yeah so this was a box and another way as we saw earlier okay i just wanted to show you all the easiest way as well to get this box let's just close this okay and yeah so let's just close this terminal we do not require this anymore and what we'll try to do is let's just do search ploid search ploid drupal and let's get that you know other exploit present over here. drupal get into remote command execution let's get that remote script okay paste it another thing is i forgot completely about that php shell if you get an error saying curl init or something like that right curl init error so that means you have to download that php curl okay you have to download and install it probably you have to just install it i guess php curl that's how the error is going to go and in this ruby script as well i got few errors so let's just look into that i think we had to install that hairline or highline something so let's just go into this ruby script yeah i think we had to get this uh, file installed using gem i guess highline import just google like uh, how to install highline import it will probably show you the gel command so in short it says user user agent it's trying to create some web shell i didn't i don't think this web shell thing worked literally so i tried to avoid that because not avoid it actually but i tried to upload a web shell but uh, it did not work for some reason and we can try it over here i guess for some reason it did not work so let's just try to create a small web shell yeah this php exploit right take this uh, create document there was a php php echo system let's just keep it simple quest command
Okay, so we'll just leave it as it. I don't think we require this. Just start with PHP. Okay, so we'll have this thing present PHP reverse. So in the exploit, we'll just remove this and we'll just add reverse. We do not require the proxy or anything. It says try PHP reverse shell. It's going to try for this. And this is the bash command which is going to give. Okay, I don't think we have to do anything more over here. Probably have to give the URL, but I think we have to run this exploit. Then this uh, URL is going to obviously I didn't make a backup, but ex exploit 2. It was PHP. Okay, let's just try to run it and see if it works. Ruby exploit two RB. It says okay, we have to give some. There's some usage over here. Obviously, the target machine. So it says example Ruby use this and give the obviously do not use this because we have the exploit two. So HTTPS example, so that's the web page which we are going to load. So that is HTTP 10.10.10.9, and also it says the target that does require authentication, the target that does not require authentication. So I think we do require authentication because the user we actually had that user ID, login ID, right? Login page, right? So let's just try using this no authentication. We do require authentication actually, but uh, but for some reason it works over here. I think if, and it says target and all exploitable might not have write access. So that means we cannot write that uh, shell, the reverse shell, right? For some reason we cannot write it. So it sends its own payload, I guess, to execute, and over here we get a shell. So we just use this, uh, no, does not require authentication. Obviously, if that did not work, we try to use this. I used both, by the way, but this worked. And if you do who am I, it's a bit slow, but I think we have command execution over here. So we land up in that uh, inet directory, I guess. Okay, inet pub Drupal directory. So I don't think we can go back. We cannot go back. It's a, like a restricted shell, so probably you have to transfer that reverse CXE file or something and upgrade to a proper shell. So this was released after the box was released. So it's a good to have, but you would not learn, you know, whether execution is present or something. And that initial rest endpoint that was the intended part. Okay, so this was the box, and if you guys like the video, so do give a thumbs up and do subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thank you.